We could hear it all here at the WHAS 11 studios, the massive fireworks display for the 4th of July at Waterfront Park and of course from celebrations all across Kentuckiana. WHAS 11's Taylor Woods and photojournalist Ian Hardwit are live downtown now. Taylor, what did folks out there at the waterfront think of the festivities this year? Well, they thought it truly was an amazing experience and you know the orchestra and the fireworks show just wrapped up minutes ago, but this year's attendees told me they truly enjoyed their 4th of July. From the grand fireworks show. I always like the fireworks. It's what gets me the most. To the singing. They showed me a program earlier and the guy looked like he was just throwing down and I love music. And orchestra performance. I'm loving it. I'm loving it. The annual Waterfront 4th of July Festival drew a crowd of hundreds. It's a time for many families to spend together. We usually do this because we like having family time and family bonding. And it helps us relax and connect more. Local food trucks kept folks fed and everyone brought out their favorite lawn chairs just in time for world class entertainment. I'm having a great time and enjoying the music, the fun and the people. The night, a great time filled with fun, even for those here to work, like give me some sugar signature cotton candy, bringing a sweet experience to the waterfront. You know, yesterday we we're here yesterday for Sandlot and coming back out today just is strengthening a, a, a crowd. And of course, it's the sparkling explosions in air everyone looked forward to the most. A little bit of both. I would love to hear the orchestra, but the fireworks definitely. An overall great experience that some are recommending to others. You just need to get out and do it and try to enjoy them because we definitely are enjoying the, the hometown atmosphere here in Louisville. And if you take a look at the skyline, you can see that there are still some people that are lighting their fireworks. There's also some people that are still leaving the downtown area. So you can expect for some streets to be a little congested. Reporting live in downtown Louisville, Taylor Woods, WHAS 11 night team on your side. All right, Taylor, thank you. Now on to our nation's capital. President Biden welcomed veterans and military members to the South Lawn for a concert and barbecue. Amazing what a difference music makes. No, no, I really mean it. Think about it. Think how music can change moods. Music can make us feel better. It's, it's just incredible. President Biden there thanking the service members for protecting America and everyone at that event for celebrating our country. All aboard for the fourth annual Paris Town Independence Day celebration. Over in Christie's Garden, there was entertainment from the dance sensation kids and the Louisville Crashers. They took the stage right before the fireworks this afternoon. And the Crescent Hill Festival was held on the grounds of the Peterson Duminell House on South Peterson Avenue. People walked through artist booths, lots of food options available for them, and live music, of course, as well. Over in Indiana, Jeffersonville hosted its 4th of July parade this morning. The people marching in that parade included that groovy bear you saw, some veterans and musical performances from Jeffersonville High School. People lined up Spring Street in downtown Jeff to watch Catching Candy, waving all along the way. Now it is the one and only Nathan's famous 4th of July hot dog eating contest. It almost had to be canceled this afternoon due to weather, but eventually they did get things going. Thank goodness. Three, two, one, put down your hot dog. Oh, my glory. And to no surprise, the greatest of all time, Joey Jaws Chestnut downed a disgusting 62 hot dogs in 10 minutes to claim his eighth straight mustard belt and 16th overall in the contest. Alden and I have been playing a little bit of uh, trivia today. So Alden, I've got one more question for you. For <laughs> I didn't this know evening. we were doing this again. Okay, what is it? One more. Okay, where was, what city in the United States was the first official Independence Day celebration held? Oh, that's a good one. I want to say Philadelphia. Good job. Okay. Yeah. Can you tell me the year? Uh, the year. Okay, yeah. so. Well, 70, 1776 would be the...
first guess, but Revolutionary War ended in 1783, so I'll say 1783. It was actually 1777. They got right mm. on it. <laughs> oh, that's right. Okay, I remember now. That makes sense. Well, it was a pretty good night uh, for fireworks out there. Still some folks uh, setting them off. Very nice weather. I'm starting with radar because oftentimes on the 4th, you can actually make out the firework smoke, but can't really do that this year. I think uh, that smoke is staying fairly low to the ground at the moment, but we'll take a look at air quality in just a couple of minutes. Otherwise, we don't have any other rain or inclement weather around the area, so a pretty nice night for us for sure. So we had good weather for the fireworks. Tomorrow we could have a couple of isolated thunderstorms, but we have almost daily rain chances as we head through this extended week as well. 82 degrees still here downtown, so it's a bit of a warm night for us. 80 out in Linden, upper 70s elsewhere here in the metro area as we look out over the west ends to try to see some more fireworks. Winds are very light and you can make out how smoky it is out there. So a lot of that smoke is fairly low to the ground. 72 in Brandenburg. We don't have any high heat showing up, but ahead it will break down when we could see our next chance for widespread rain. Grace. All right, Alden, thank you. On to some of our other top stories now tonight. A motorcyclist is dead after a crash with a car in Jeffersonville early this morning. Jeffersonville police say they found the motorcyclist on East 10th Street with serious injuries. They tried to save the driver's life, but that driver later died at University Hospital. No one was arrested and Jeffersonville police do continue to investigate. We've also learned the names of the victim and alleged shooter in a murder suicide in Okolona. Police say they first responded to an apartment near Jefferson Mall for a welfare check on July 3rd. They reported a foul odor coming from inside and found a woman now identified as Tamika Hunt and a man, John Whiteside Jr., both dead from gunshot wounds. Preliminary reports indicate Whiteside shot Hunt and then himself. The homicide unit is investigating. Right now, LMPD is reporting homicides are up 9% since this time last year. Non-deadly shootings are up 2%, and now Moms Demand Action is letting people know how they can help. It's as simple as scanning a QR code or filling out a form, signing up to be part of the solution. The Louisville chapter of the national group Moms Demand Action stayed busy at a booth in Crescent Hill today. Kathy Mikas urged Louisville residents to reach out to their legislators about what they would like changed. Like today, we would talk to people who are aware of the problem and try to get them involved in helping solve it. And we also talk to people who aren't aware of the scope and scale of the problem to let them know how big a problem this is for our country and how many people we lose. Moms Demand Action is also pleading for gun owners to lock up their firearms, both at home and in their cars. Right now, neither is required under Kentucky law. While many gather to celebrate the 4th of July tonight across the country, some are in mourning. Following two mass shootings at 4th of July celebrations, one in Philadelphia and another in Fort Worth, killing at least eight people, injuring nearly a dozen more. ABC's Melissa Adon has new details into those investigations. A mass shooting in Philadelphia described as horrific while gunfire erupted the night before July 4th. And this armed and armored individual wreaked havoc firing with a rifle at their victims, seemingly at random. Philadelphia officials say the shooting claimed five lives and injured two others, including a two-year-old and 13-year-old that are in stable condition. The suspect, while wearing body armor, a ski mask, and holding a AR-15 assault rifle, was observed at several locations. Officials describing the chaos with at least 50 shell casings found at the crime scenes. They were taking active fire, scooping people up, getting to try and get them to the hospital to save them. Police have the suspect in custody, but are not naming them until criminal charges are filed. This mass shooting following a string of gun violence in Fort Worth, Texas, police say a holiday event known as Como Fest ended with three people killed and eight injured, including a child. The rampage follows the one year mark of the Highland, Illinois mass shooting when a 19 year old opened fire during a July 4th parade, killing seven and wounding dozens. President Biden once more calling on Congress to pass stricter gun laws, addressing the National Education Association this afternoon virtually. But Congress needs to step up, pass common sense gun safety laws to protect our kids and educators. On Independence Day, the U.S. recording more than 340 mass shootings so far this year, according to the Gun Violence Archive, already more than the total for the entire year in 2018.
Melissa Don, ABC News, Los Angeles.